Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. I kind of came up with this and it's kind of cool. I could, it could be critiqued a little bit more to make it look like it's continuous. I didn't mean for it to be continuous. It looks like springs wrapped around. I might have to break this video up into two parts. So what we're going to do first, we're going to design the part. And all I did was take a an oval, not a ellipse, just don't hold down the control button, get an oval. And then take a, I'm gonna hit P and put it in the center of the page. I'm gonna take a two point line, hold down the control button and hit P. And then I'm gonna take my virtual segment delete key and I'm gonna delete that line. Now I can actually delete this line. I'm gonna take this shape. Well, you know what? I didn't wanna delete that line. I'm going to take the smart fill tool and make a new shape. So now, whoop, so now I have that shape. I'm going to move it up here and I'm going to go in and left click, right click. I wanted that line. Control D and make a duplicate. And I'm going to move with the four sided cross. I'm going to move that down there. Now I can take this line back if I want or create a new line and I'm going to have it snap to there. And you can kind of see the cylinder shape. So I'm going to take the virtual segment delete key and I'm going to delete that. So that's pretty much part of the equation. Now we're going to take the smart fill tool, fit on, on any color and do that right there. Now what we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and group them together, control G, and then I'm going to control D and make a duplicate and I'm going to mirror it both ways. So it's just the opposite. And I'm gonna put it right there. Well, you know what, I don't. I wanna put it right there. There we go. Now, and I'm not worried right now about the line down the middle. I'm gonna control G to group, control D to duplicate. And then I'm gonna move that down to there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do one more. And you could do as many or as little as you want. I'm gonna, left click, right click, and I'm gonna go through here and delete these lines on the solid parts on really just, well, you know what? I'm gonna go and delete all the lines. Well, there's several ways you could probably make that. So we have this swirl. I'm gonna control G to group it. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this thing 90 degrees and I'm gonna make it smaller. I'm going to take an ellipse, make it pretty big, and hit P. Control D to make a duplicate while holding down the shift key, make one smaller. You want to make it about the width of that. Let me move this out of the way for just a second. Normally, I don't move things, but you can move that. Hit P, I drew a straight line. I'm going to rotate it 22 and a half degrees. And then I'm going to control D and make a duplicate, and I'm going to mirror it. I want that shape right there, so I'm gonna take the Smart Fill tool and make that, I'm gonna nudge it up out of the way. Then I'm going to left click, right click, because I want that shape. Now what I'm gonna do is take my item, and you, I'm kind of doing this, well, you'll see in just a second, kind of backwards, because I don't wanna fill this in yet, because we're gonna have to put some things behind. I'm going to go to effects and envelope and I'm going to take right here. I'm going to make envelope form and I see I made that shape. Now I did not move this so I can just nudge it or did I move it? No. So what I have to do is shift select that and go EC that put it in our shape. But for some reason it's not really that close. So when you get here, you might want to critique it a little bit. See, it's not all the way to the top. I don't really know why it does that. I've got my nudge factor set on 10 inches. I'm gonna point like 0 0.1, 0 0.01. I'm gonna grab our shape and I'm gonna move it up. Kinda of gotta get it in the middle. Now I'm actually gonna see if you can see that one's over there a little bit closer to that side. <coughs> Excuse me. Then I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this because I'm working in the center of the page. I'm actually gonna need those circles here in a minute, but I'm not gonna do it. 
And there's a couple of ways you could do this. And we're just going to test it out. I'm going to control G to, or control D to make a duplicate, alternate C to put our rotation in the center. And I'm going to, now if you remember, I rotated at 90 degrees to get it there. So we need to rotate at 135 degrees to get our one, um, or 45 degree. And this has worked out pretty, pretty close, but that's going to be behind. So I don't really care but it's good enough. Now what I want to do is draw two ellipses and I'm going to hit P, put it in the center of the page. And I kind of want maybe a little bit bigger. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and it's going to grow in from the outside. I'm going to control D to make a duplicate of that. And I'm going to bring this one in. Now I want to change my nudge factor back to that. I'm going to make it like 12 inches. Well, don't have to. I'm going to move this up and I'm going to take my smart fill tool and fill that in, and I'm going to make it a red. I'm going to take away the outline. Now what I'm going to do is take this back. Whoop. See, I didn't get rid of my line. I want to get rid of my lines. But since I nudged, I can just nudge that right back up. Now I can nudge this down. And you kind of see what I get. But I'm going to grab it in the object, order, front of page. So we get all this. Now, what's kind of cool about this, if it all works out, we only have to fill in a couple of colors. <clears throat> but I'm gonna fill this in with the Smart Fill tool. I'm gonna fill that, in. well, it's not gonna work because of that. So what I'm gonna do is nudge it up. You know what, I'm gonna change my nudge factor. I'm gonna nudge it back. I don't wanna have to nudge so far. I'm gonna nudge it like three inches. And I'm gonna nudge it up. And I'm going to do the front side of my thing. So everything that's going to be on the front. And then I'm going to take the interactive fill tool. And I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. I'm going to put black on both ends. I'm going to take a white and put it in the middle. Whoop, I missed. Grab a white and put it right there in the middle. Kind of giving us that shine. But since I'm on a curve, I'm going to take this handle down. Now, we could copy that over, but every one of them is going to be a little bit different. And by doing it this way, you won't have a, a line in the middle. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and angle this up, get a white, put it right in the middle. And you can kind of see now that you can kind of bend it with the curve. And we can move it up a little bit. And you could use the attribute eyedropper, but it's not going to be on the same curve. So I'm going to get the smart or the interactive fill tool and put black on both ends. This way you kind of get a, a shadow in there and then see definitely we want to bring that up. So that's pretty good. Now the other one, let's move that down, move that down, move that down. I'm going to move this up out of the way for a second because I want to group this together. Control G. Now I want to take my other object and I'm going to fill in everything I'm going to be able to see when it's in the back. So I'm going to take the Smart Fill tool and go there, 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 and there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out of the way and I'm they're grouped together and I'm going to get rid of my lines. But I'm not going to get rid of them in case I mess up. But now I'm going to grab all these and control G to to group them together and see what we get. It looks like it's wrapped around there. Now, the easiest way I think is uh, to make it rotate would be to take that dark one and control D, alternate C, and rotate it 45 degrees. See, it's in the back, control D all the way around. So all your places are in the back. Then grab the front one, control D, alternate C, 45 degrees, and look at that. That's pretty cool. And it, if I critiqued it a little bit more, you know, it, this one's actually better. It looks like it's a continue. This space is a little bit bigger, but if you wanted to play around with it a little bit, you could you could do that, uh, make it perfect. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, the only other thing that might make it look good if you uh, if you had uh, 
this part of the front somehow, but that's pretty cool. And then when you put a blue box around it, I don't, the black box just isn't going to do it on this one because we've got so much dark. Still looks pretty cool. But you could, I could have made it any color. Um, you know, I could have used blue in the background and then it would have really stood out. Let's just kind of look at that. If we grab that and make it blue, now look what happens if we put our uh, box around it and make it black. See how it looks. Object, order, back of page. That looks pretty cool. Anyway, I hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.